My name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And today, the name of our show is Great Lakes Challenges. And I have with me as my guest, Joel Braumeyer. And uh, Joel Braumeyer, um, he serves as the Alliance for the Great Lakes as an associate director. Joel Braumeyer has his Master of Science degree from the University of Michigan School of Natural Resource and Environmental. Um, and he also received the prestigious Women National Farm and Garden Association Scholarship. In 1996, Joel graduated with honors with a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology from Valparaiso University. And, you know, it, uh, and I'm glad you're on my show, Joel, because Thanks, your educational background and your working experience uh, suits uh, the job that you're doing right now, a Bachelor of Science in Biology and, and a Master's in Resource and Environment. And, and why did you choose to work for um, uh, the uh, Alliance for the Great Lakes? Well, you know, it sort of chose me. I grew up here in the Great Lakes region and uh, had an interest in the outdoors from an early age. So when I moved to Chicago a few years back, I started volunteering, actually, at the Alliance for the Great Lakes, which used to be called the Lake Michigan Federation. Uh, from that, it was sort of a natural progression just to get involved uh, as part of my career. So that's where I landed. And, and what's the mission of the Alliance for the Great Lakes? Well, the Alliance for the Great Lakes is the oldest Citizens Great Lakes organization in North America. And we simply work to conserve the, the quality of the Great Lakes water uh, for generations of people and wildlife. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, fresh water you're talking about, right? And uh, I, I think on your website uh, you mentioned about the percentages of, of fresh water in the world and in, in the Great Lakes and uh, the percentage of, uh, of the water in the United States. Um, what What is that? Uh, what's the percentage on that? Well, it's uh, about 20% of the world's fresh water supply, fresh surface water supply is located in the Great Lakes. And 20%? 20%. Just to visualize, visualize that, yeah. uh, if you spread that across the entire continental U.S., that's about nine feet deep of water nine spread across deep? the entire country. So we're talking about quadrillions of gallons <laughs> of water. It's a, it's a very precious resource. And, and uh, there's a, of all the water in the world, 1% is fresh water. Uh, that's right. 1% is fresh water, and 20% of that 1% is up here in the Great Lakes. And how, what's the percentage of all the fresh water in the United States? What percentage does the Great Lakes uh, cover? Uh, it's a, 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 it's about 90% uh, of the fresh surface water uh, in the United States. Yeah, approximately. Yeah. yeah. And, and so uh, we're living up here in uh, God's uh, world. I mean, th 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 this is heaven, right? This is God's heaven. Uh, it's it's huh? truly a blessed part of the country, I can tell you that. I mean, oh. we've, got a, we've got a resource here that people out west fight over. Yes. So. And, and that's why it's so important because uh, they say that you could live without food for about 30 days. But uh, try living without water. They say you can only live without water for a couple of days. That's right. And, 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 and we need water to survive because that's what makes up our body, their, uh, water. And so what is the state of the health of the Great Lakes? Well, we're doing all right. Um, there's we're some doing good, all right? We're doing all right. Some good things and some bad things. When, when people think about the Great Lakes, uh, you know, especially uh, folks that were around for the middle part of the 20th century, a couple things spring to mind discharges of, of pollution into yes. the water and big piles of dead fish washing off on the shoreline. Yes. Fortunately, those are two problems that we've gotten a pretty good handle on. Okay. Um, so we've reduced a lot of that industrial pollution and a lot of those problems with fish dying. But there are still some problems out there that are very significant that aren't quite as visible. Things like invasive species and, uh, and uh, water use that actually depletes the water supply in the Great Lakes. Now, you, you mentioned about in this industrial waste coming in. Well, you know, at, at, and you're talking about the middle of the 20th century. I mean, we had our steel mills going mm -hmm. uh, in Indiana. We had a lot of industry going. Now uh, they're all, um, they all, uh, they aren't here. A majority of them are not here anymore. And But yet we still have some type of industry in Indiana where in the paper, in the Tribune, it, it mentioned uh, British Petroleum, that mm -hmm. they want to upgrade their refinery. And, and by upgrading the refinery, they're going to have more waste to discharge, and, and they want uh, the uh, Indiana EPA gave them an okay to discharge additional ammonium and to discharge additional sludge. Now, uh, uh, what's your position on that? 
Well, you, know, you bring up a good point that a lot of those, a lot of the mills in the industry that were on the southeast side of Chicago and northern Indiana are, are gone. A lot yeah. of that is shut down. A lot of those discharges aren't there anymore. Along with that, there have been a lot of jobs that have left the region. Yeah. So sometimes you know you got to expand. You got to have development to support uh, a tax base and job growth in a region. But that doesn't have to happen at the expense of the health of the Great Lakes. Uh, that proposal that you're referring to, that BP is 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 pushing to put uh, sludge and ammonia into Lake Michigan, it's the kind of outdated technology that we used back in you know <laughs> the 1960s, not in the year 2007. Well, so they, they said they're going to spend what uh, in the paper, and this is what I'm quoting from the uh, Chicago Tribune. Mm -hmm. They mentioned they're going to spend over 80 million dollars to upgrade their um, wastewater treatment plants. There, so I don't know what they're spending it on, uh, and, and I don't know the type of treatment. But and they said that they need this because it's going to provide 80 jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, 80 jobs are going to provide to pollute Lake Michigan. Uh, there's no ammonia, and, and you know what's the problem with ammonia? Well, ammonia is a highly toxic substance. It actually can kill many things that it comes into contact with. And, and they actually want to dump a fairly high concentration of ammonia right in the middle of the lake and mix it with our fresh water supply. So this idea that you've got to measure either jobs or the environment, yeah. that's, an out, that's an outdated that? discussion. Yeah. yeah, we really, what we need to focus on is getting a sewage treatment plant there that can actually handle this waste. Yeah. Um, just to give you a, a bit of reference, that type of a permit hasn't been approved anywhere in Lake Michigan for decades. Yeah. So it's really a, an outdated way to look at how we treat the Great Lakes. Well, you know, I, I, I would encourage any citizen living in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, or any place like that, Lake Michigan, to write a letter to their U.S. Senator, Congressman, uh, 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 saying that we do not want additional discharge into Lake Michigan. That's a great idea, Frank, and I also encourage anybody who uh, who feels the urge to protect the Great Lakes to do that today. Sure. Now, uh, what are, and you know, the next question is, what are of the what are the top threats facing the Great Lakes besides well, besides, uh, what, besides what ammonia and yeah. sludge going into the water? <laughs> yeah. uh, the one that I always think of first is uh, invasive species, invasive species, and that's and that's one of those uh, that that's a biological pollution that you can't really see. Sure. Uh, so nobody thinks about it too much. But things like zebra mussels that have gotten in through the ocean-going freighters that come into the Great Lakes, species like Asian carp that jump out of the water and yeah. smack boaters in the face and yes. cause injuries that are coming up from the Illinois River, yes. um, those types of species do a number on the Great Lakes ecosystem. They really cause problems. Um, they deplete good fish like yellow perch and walleye, um, and they create hazards for boaters and people who like to enjoy a day out, a day out on the lake. Have, do they have a, uh, the statistics on how much they're uh, uh, eating up on aquatic life coming up? Is it 40%, 50%, 60% of the aquatic life? Oh, as, uh, as far the as the Asian carp. The Asian carp, well, they, they can eat up to 40% of their body weight daily. 40% of their body yeah. weight? So this is a fish that grows up to 100 pounds. Oh, so, so they might be <laughs> destroying everything as they're coming up. The Illinois River is basically now a, a river of carp. A river of carp. Right, and if we're not careful, we're going to have a lake of carp here in the Great Lakes if yes. we don't keep them out. And, and right now, they're 40 miles outside of Lake Michigan. That's right. They're the other side of, of an electric barrier yep. that the Army Corps of Engineers put up. Right. And uh, that's true. It's gonna, uh, uh, what type of havoc will they, they do to our fishing industry? Well, if you can imagine this, um, Cruising down the Illinois River at 60 miles an hour in a little bass boat, the yeah. kind of the boats that, that bass fishermen sure. use, fish are jumping out of the water, flying, smacking you in the face. People have gotten knocked out. They've gotten bloody noses, um, nearly drowned because of this. And so boating on the Great Lakes could actually become a hazard instead of a pleasure. That's one real problem with Asian carp. The other thing is they eat the same food that all of our great Great Lakes fish, like yellow perch, enjoy. Yeah. And so, but they do a better job at it. They so if, if they're here, they're going to eat all the food that our fish eat, and we're not going to have any fish uh, left to go after. Um, and that's really critical because the recreational sport fishing in the Great Lakes is a four and a half billion dollar industry. Four and a half billion dollars? Billion with a B. Yep. It's, oh. it's huge. So it's and, and the Great Lakes, you're talking about all five lakes. Right. All five lakes. Yeah. Right, so it's really no contest. We just have to keep those carp from getting into the Great Lakes. Well, why why don't you think uh, our, our in Washington they don't have some type of law for you to say no more uh, importing because you know uh, they came in because we imported for the farms, mm -hmm. the fish farms down south. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, we are kind of behind the times on, on that I'm front. So we don't really, uh, uh, the United States doesn't really screen animals before they get imported into this country. So it's sort of, a, it's a form of biological terrorism. You have, you have species coming into the country yes. that we're not sure what's going to happen if they ever escape into the wild. Uh, so some other countries, you know, for example, uh, places like New Zealand and Australia actually check species before they enter the country to make sure that they're not going to cause harm. And that's a step that we really need to put in place uh, for our uh, national security and for the security of our, of, uh, our outdoor lifestyle and, and sport fishing and boating. Now, uh, does this affect the quality of water? You know, we have supply of water and mm -hmm. we got the quality of water. Right. What's what's affecting the quality of water in the Great Lakes? Well, uh, in an interesting twist, the, the, a lot of people also always say, well, since the zebra mussel got here, the water's a lot clearer. <laughs> yeah. And that's true because they filter uh, they filter small particles of, of plants out of the water, so it actually appears clearer. Yeah. Um, so the water quality in the Great Lakes is very good these days. Uh, actually, you know, the city of Chicago, in fact, has been rated as having. Uh, one of the best, if not the best, municipal water supplies in the United States. And, and, and that's why the people <laughs> living here in Chicago or Chicago area, I don't, I can't see why they go out and buy a bottle of water. Yeah, I'd say, <laughs> you know, save your money. Yeah, if, if you save, live in Chicago, right. save your money. Yeah, because, because uh, you go to a grocery store and you got aisles of bottled water. And they, and they say, well, I'm going to buy the bottled water because that's better than Chicago water. And I tell them, no, I said, we have the best water around. And 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 and, and you, like you said, save your money. It's absolutely true. That's I, I think of people living out in Colorado and Nevada and Utah, having to fight and scrap over who gets water when. And here we've got this great municipal supply. So sure. I you know encourage people to use it. But um, also it it reminds us that we've really got to be vigilant about uh, making sure we have we continue to have access to that water. And and, and that's why uh, why is uh, Lake Michigan so important to Chicago then? Well. Uh, for, besides the drinking water, of course, we get uh, over 60 million visits a year to the lakefront here in Chicago. We've 16? got 60, 60, oh, 60 million, million. 60. Oh, and so we've God. got we've got beaches, we've got uh, this entertainment complex yeah. called Navy Pier, we've got our lakefront running and bicycling path. Yeah. You know, we have uh, dozens of reasons that people come out to the lakefront, and that drives the economy of the city of Chicago. When you go to a magazine and you see ads for why people should bring conferences sure. to the city. Sure. What's in that? What's well, in the picture? The, uh, our lakefront. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that lakefront really drives the economy here, but it's essential that we make, that we keep those waters. We, we keep conscious of, of making sure that water supply is sustainable and, and available for the city of Chicago and for the rest of the Great Lakes. Um, and, and and you know I'm glad you said that for the city of Chicago and the rest of the Great Lakes because right now. Uh, who's our neighbor? The way we're, uh, we're a global economy, everyone is our neighbor now. Right. And we have to protect our neighbor. We have to protect our neighbor, and we also have to be aware <laughs> that some of our neighbors uh, may not have our best interests in mind. Uh, back in 1998, in fact, uh, a company in Ontario proposed to take water from Lake Superior, put it in tankers, and ship yeah. it over to Asia oh, for yeah. sale as bottled water. Oh, is that right? And that was actually that idea was actually approved, <laughs> and all of a sudden, all the Great Lakes governors and the states and around the Great Lakes said, "Wait a minute, this is a little scary. Yeah. We're going to have people exporting our water to these distant yeah. these distant countries, and we don't have any control over it." Yeah. So right now, the governors are working to create a system so that doesn't ever happen again. Well, I, uh, is there a quota on how much water uh, the the Chicagoland area could uh, draw from uh, Lake Michigan? Well, the, the Chicago area is in a bit of a unique position. They actually do have a limit that was set by the Supreme Court on the amount of water that they can take out of Lake Michigan. Uh, and so, and that's, uh, that limit governs what's available to the state of Illinois to use for drinking water. Fortunately, we're not nearly bumping up against that limit, and the better job we do in, here in Illinois of conserving water, the more water we'll have access to. You know, um, uh, here's a question that, that they always ask me. And, uh, are we guaranteed access to safe, clean drinking water? Uh, is that a guarantee? Well, nothing, nothing in life is guaranteed. And just because you live on the shoreline of the Great Lakes doesn't mean you're automatically going to have access to that water. That, that case I mentioned earlier, this idea yes. of, of exporting water around the sure. globe from the Great Lakes, the pressure to do that 
uh, is only going to get stronger oh, as yes, time goes yeah. on. I mean, they, you, you've heard the cliche now, water is the oil of the 21st yes, century. Yes. And the, but it's not an exaggeration. Uh, people need, as you mentioned, they need water every day to live. And, and uh, on, on the screen right now, we have a little uh, map showing there. And uh, I, I, that map states the pollution. In Lake Michigan, I don't know if you could read it. Right, but uh, you want to talk about this little map? Absolutely. Um, that's actually a map of what are called areas of concern in the Great Lakes, okay. and the areas of concern are like the worst pollution spots okay. in the entire in the entire region. And we uh, <laughs> unfortunately have one here in our home state okay. of Illinois, up in Waukegan. Waukegan? Yeah. No, no. Why is that? In, uh, okay, we got one in Waukegan. Uh, that's in Lake Michigan, right? That's in Lake Michigan. Yep. Uh, how many more in Lake Michigan do you have? Uh, there are about a dozen others in, in Lake Michigan, a number in Wisconsin, number in Wisconsin, a few in Michigan, and one in Indiana. And and so how how can one prevent this type of pollution entering the, the Great Lakes, like like the one in Waukegan? What right. what what's up in Waukegan? Well, a lot of these a lot of these places that we call areas of concern are legacy uh, places where we have legacies of manufacturing, and then a lot of that industrial discharge before we knew better was just dumped right into the okay. lake. Today, that's unthinkable. Okay. You know, nobody's going to stick a pipe yeah. out into the lake and, no. and discharge no, 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 things right. like uh, PCBs that cause right. cancer. But back in the, in the early 20th century and mid-20th century, it's a fairly common practice. So now it's not a matter of making sure that doesn't happen again as much as it is cleaning up some of that pollution that's been left behind. Mm, but so now you're, you're saying that they discharge all of that, uh, their sludge probably, mm -hmm. and it's settled down to the bottom. I, yep. Is this what you're talking about, the settlement, the contaminated settlement that is on the bottom now? Right. Up in Waukegan, there's a, there's a thick layer of sediment that's sitting on the bottom that's contaminated with a chemical that causes cancer in humans okay. and, and makes it difficult for fish to survive, which is why we have to put out advisories on people eating Great Lakes fish. And so you can't just go out and catch a fish up near Waukegan and, and eat it because it might be contaminated yeah, with these right. chemicals. So uh, I, I think they're making research studies to cap these uh, contaminated sediment there. Mm -hmm. And you think that's what uh, they're going to do up there in Waukegan? Because well, who pays for that? The Army Corps of Engineers? The uh, US EPA? I mean, who? Usually, who well, the areas of concern are usually paid for for the cleanup by uh, a combination. Sometimes it's, it's partially the federal government, partially the state. Usually the local industries that, that are around the region um, contribute to that cleanup. And every case is different. So in some places, they'll put a cap over those sediments. Other places, they'll go in there with a dredge and really, and really yank them all out of there until it's totally clean. You know, uh, uh, we're talking about the quality of water and the supply of water. So, uh, you know, uh, we all live here along Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. and, and we own a house. We water our lawns. Uh, but no one ever thinks about if that supply will ever run out. Right. Do you think we're we're protected with our water supply here? Well, you know, with the the the, the things like this uh, idea to export water export overseas, water. those those grab the headlines. Yeah. But the real danger is is not probably coming from overseas. It's probably coming from communities that are right here uh, in the Midwest. Uh, getting water from the Great Lakes. Over what's called the con the the basin divide, yeah, the, kind of, yeah, the right. subcontinental divide, right? Because we got the major one splitting the United States, and here we have we have our own kind right. of little uh, continental divide. Exactly. So inside that divide today, we all have access to Great Lakes water. Yes. Outside the divide, they d people don't, and so the big controversy is probably not going to be shipping water to Asia in tankers, but uh, a thousand communities that are on the other side of that dividing line trying to get access to Great Lakes water. And that's why having some type of cooperation between the Great Lakes states is so important yeah. to manage that water because no one state can do it alone. And, and, and the reason why they're having trouble on that other side of the continental divide because a majority of these communities are getting probably their water supply from well water. Mm -hmm. And what's happening with our well water is being getting contaminated. That's right. Uh, as people, you know, when we don't conserve our water the way we should, meaning yeah. we, we waste it, you know, we use too much, yeah. those well water supplies get drawn down. Yeah. And as that happens, you've got naturally occurring things in the environment that can cause damage to people, like radium, sure. which exists in wells uh, at a natural level. But as, you're, as you draw down that, that well, it actually becomes more concentrated and can cause a public health problem. And, and the reason why we need the quality of water is that our, our labor force is um, not with the senior citizens. 
our labor force is with our young kids. And if, if their water quality is not healthy for them, they're going to be sick. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll have a mental uh, disbalance in them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, they may not be educated enough to, to know about high tech. And that's why uh, the United States, especially uh, throughout, I mean, throughout the whole world, needs more uh, of this quality of water to make us all healthy. It's an interesting point. The clean water, you know, being tied to healthy, <laughs> healthy development is, yes. is absolutely critical. And it also speaks to the economic advantage that clean water gives to a region. You know, so not only do we have healthy children growing up with clean water, but we have access to a, a sustainable water supply that we can manage for economic development as well and attract people to living here in the Great Lakes because it's a healthy, fun, scenic place to oh, live yes. with plenty of water. And uh, right. And uh, our, our water, what are some ways that people could um, uh, 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 save this type of water, quality of water that, that, that we need? Uh, uh, what what some of the methods uh, that maybe that you, your group uh, are, are doing? Well, as we talked about, in terms of conserving water, uh, one thing folks can do is is don't buy bottled water. Don't buy bottled water. So uh, okay. use use the great save tap money, water we have. Save, yeah. save money. Okay. Um, you know, don't waste energy bottling water. <laughs> Just uh, you know, buy a home filter if you need sure. to, and use what comes out of the tap. That's a, that's one great sure idea. My, my my wife, I I went out and I, I bought a filter, mm -hmm. and uh, because my wife says I'm not going to drink uh, the city water, I <laughs> said, well, why not? It's good, and she said, well, because it, I, I just don't want to because she reads in the paper. But that's mm -hmm. saving me money and also saves, what, plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they use plastic bottles for recycling, but what, one out of ten are recycled and the other one are thrown in the environment. Right, right. Um, and so you also save, uh, also save gas because you're not trucking bottled water to the right. store so yes. you can buy it. Um, other things people can do to protect water quality, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is, is certainly, you know, contact your legislator and talk to them about these potential discharges in Lake Michigan that nobody wants. And close, uh, very close to home, very hands-on, uh, people can join a local cleanup program like the Alliance's adopt a beach program that actually gets them out to the shoreline and uh, picks up litter off the beach and monitors the conditions of the water there at the coast to know if their local waters are actually clean or not. Yeah, I, 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 on, on your website, you're, uh, you show several slides on pollution, coastal wetlands, uh, invasive species, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, these are what different groups could do with the Great Alliance uh, uh, of the Great Lakes, and and right, uh, and you'll uh, people could join as a member. Right? Absolutely. Um, one thing we depend on to do the good work that we do are the contributions of Great Lakes citizens and people from around the world, for that matter. Uh, we have contributors that are uh, not only in the Chicago area but in the Great Lakes yeah. and nationwide. So uh, those types of contributions are, are very welcome. And being a member of the Alliance for the Great Lakes means that you're actually contributing to solving all these problems that we're talking about today. Um, we know no one person can do it alone, and uh, that's a great way to get involved and to, to make sure um, that your money is helping to protect the Great Lakes. Yeah, I, I'm on your website, you say own a beach or save a beach or, or adopt a adopt beach. A beach adopt a beach, yeah. Be, yes. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to sell, we don't want to sell the beaches, <laughs> yeah. but we do want people to adopt them. Yes. Uh, because what's, you know, what's the one way that most people interact with the Great Lakes? And here in Chicago, it's sure. definitely at the beaches. Those beaches are packed every day during the summer. Yeah, but, but sometimes a person will go to the beach and it's closed. Why are the beaches closing? Well, beaches close uh, for a variety of reasons, but uh, typically it's because they, the city of Chicago or the Chicago Park District, in this case, is monitoring the water and they're right. finding high levels of bacteria oh, in the oh, water. E. coli, right. and that's how they measure E. coli. Right. Yes. And so when that happens, they put out an advisory to make sure people know that there's a potential threat in the, in the water at the beach. By and large, Great Lakes water is cleaner than it has been in 100 years. Uh, we find high concentrations of bacteria at beaches sometimes for a variety of reasons. Very occasionally, it's because of sewage overflows. Uh, in, in other communities outside of Chicago, that's much more true. Here in Chicago, it could be something as simple as seagull droppings actually creating a problem. Um, it could be stormwater running off of, uh, of a pier or a parking yeah. lot into the water that's causing the problem. So it's tough to put your finger on exactly what the source is. But uh, follow the advisories 
And if you want to do something to really clean the beach up, go ahead and adopt a beach with the Alliance. Get out there uh, and, and help clean it up. Now, uh, uh, what does global warming mean for the Great Lakes? Uh, I get because that. It, every, yeah. you know, you're reading about global warming. You pick up the paper, yeah. global warming is doing this and this. How is it going to affect the Great Lakes? You know, I get that question a lot, <laughs> and it's such a big issue oh, that, yes. that most people say, well, I know it's happening, yeah. and I know it's probably not a good thing, <laughs> yeah. but what am I supposed to do to fix it? In the Great Lakes, uh, the long-term predictions are telling us that the water level could go down up to five feet over the next hundred years due to global warming. Yeah. Now, these predictions are, are all over the place. Uh, there, there could actually be a slight water level rise, but uh, that's, that type of uh, a water level drop could be traumatic for a lot of people who depend on the Great Lakes for boating and sure. fishing and swimming. Um, and we really uh, have to be on our guard against global climate change in the Great Lakes uh, because we know that it's going to result in a reduction of the water available for us here in the region. And, you know, um, uh, the global warming, um, I attended a conference. It was called Beyond Pesticides. Mm -hmm. and, and they mentioned that um, organic farming will help uh, bring in the CO2s because your organic farming, the plants need the CO2. And that's one way how we could help uh, the Great Lakes is uh, anytime we plant something, don't use any pesticides. Absolutely. Um, anything that reduces the amount of, of pollution that goes into the water, yes. uh, that's, that's a great thing to do. One thing we have here in Chicago are what are called combined sewers. Yes. And, and people should know that anything they put on their sidewalk, anything they yes. put on their lawn, ultimately that's going to end up in the waterways around Chicago because all that stuff goes to the same place. So when you're spraying that pesticide, you're actually um, you're actually putting it um, right back into in this case into the Chicago River. Yeah, because your run runoff, light, as you mentioned, when it rains, and you know, and here in Chicago we have the deep tunnel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the deep tunnel uh, on a heavy rain uh, will collect uh, a lot of that uh, storm water, but it 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 it, it won't solve the uh, um, storm management from uh, lakes our lakes and our, our streams our rivers and streams. Mm -hmm. And so we need, uh, uh, and that's why we took over storm water management. Right. Uh, any, any last uh, uh, mission statement you'd like to give our audience? Well, uh, our mission is pretty simple, and it's just uh, to conserve and protect the Great Lakes for this generation and for future generations. So, Frank, I really appreciate you having me on here, and anybody can come to our website okay. to join the Alliance at www.greatlakes.org. Well, very good. I'm, I'm glad that we had the... Um, uh, alliance, uh, Great Alliance for uh, Great Lakes. Yeah.